Okay, so start on a block or a couple of cushions or whatever feels good for your thighs, your knees. Um, you know, it's very early on in the class, beginning. So it's going to start easy. You can even put a blanket under your ankles. So we're not forcing, we're not, you know, our ego is not telling us to, you know, you must kneel in a certain way. We're just going to do whatever feels good. Whew. All right. So we're, like I said, we're going to be working on creating space in the lower back. So we're going to start by kneeling and we'll be in Virasana. So legs so the ankles will be either side of the thighs, kind of in the W, like you see little kids do so easily. And it's a bit more challenging as, you know, we get past like 10, maybe. <laughs> so bring the hands to the thighs, palms facing down. And just watch the body. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. We're just getting started, so we're in, we're kneeling. Okay. okay. All right, so watch the body. Notice what's happening in the lower back, just naturally. You know, do you feel any tension there? Does it feel pretty good this morning? Notice if it feels small. So when I say it feels small, it's kind of like the ribs are pressing down and the tailbone is pressing up. So it's constricted from both ends. So we're going to be working on creating space this way today and also this way in the lower back. Now close the eyes and notice the breath for a moment. We go through life all breathing, obviously, but very rarely bringing any kind of intention to the breath. So that's what we're going to try to do today is bring intention to the breath and just notice it and extend the exhale. So each week or each couple of weeks, we're going to be extending the exhale a little more. So we've been working on inhaling for four and exhaling for six. And now for the next two weeks, we'll be inhaling for four and exhaling for seven. So both the inhale and the exhale are through the nose. And you can work on this. Actually, it'd be great if you could work on this outside of class as well, so that you can really improve the lung function and lung efficiency. So right now we're going to do this for one minute. So you're going to count the inhale. So one, two, three, four, and then count the exhale for seven. And I'll let you know when that minute is up. And you're inhaling into the belly. And it might be hard to get that last breath of the exhale. So you don't have to force it, but just try to lengthen it as much as you can. And you can practice over the next couple of weeks. And finish the breath cycle that you're on. So finish the exhale and then return to regular breathing. And bring your hands together at heart center. And dedicate your practice today to someone who needs a little extra space in their life. And 
And then we'll start with an OM. So take an inhale. Oh. Good. Okay. And then come to sit on your block in Sukhasana. Simple cross-legged. And you're going to bring a strap with you. Okay, so start with the right leg in front. And settle the sit bones down into the block so you're balanced on both sides. And wiggle the waist long. So you can imagine both sides of the waist are getting longer. Yeah, so we're going to press down, ground down through the tailbone and lift through the crown of the head. And then take your strap into your hands. And you're going to take the strap, uh, sorry, the hands at kind of like a V position. So we're going to start out pretty wide. So the arms are about just beyond 45 degrees, belly button to spine, and inhale the arms up overhead, and exhale behind. Good, belly button to spine, inhale up, and exhale in front. Inhale up, and exhale behind. Good, inhale up, exhale, down, press down through the tailbone, lift through the crown of the head, inhale up and exhale down. And then last time, inhale up and exhale in front. Okay, and then take the strap just in front of you. We're gonna need that in a sec. Inhale the arms out to the side, palms facing up and lower the shoulder blades and really reach a little bit further with the fingertips. So you can almost feel that space being created between the shoulder blades. And draw the belly button to the spine, root down through the tailbone, lift through the crown of the head, and then exhale, right elbow under left, and take a hold of the hands. Mum, you can cross them over, hands to opposite shoulders, and lift the elbows. Good. And exhale, take the chin towards the chest, so you're rounding the back and lift the shoulders a touch more and puff out through the upper back so right between the shoulder blades and inhale the arms out to the side again reach with the fingers and then exhale take the hands palms facing down reach again inhale up belly button to spine exhale down Inhale up and then exhale, take the left elbow under right. And mum, you can take them to opposite shoulders. So you're just gonna, mum, you're gonna give yourself a hug like that. Good. And lift the elbows and exhale, chin to chest. And lift the elbows again and then puff out into the part of the back between the shoulders, the lats, the lat muscles. So it's kind of like the cat in cat cow. And then inhale, release the arms and just give them a shake. And you're gonna take the strap again. You take the strap into the right hand. And the right hand is gonna to come to the top of the spine, top of the back, and then the left hand to the lower. And you don't have to try to walk the hands towards each other first, just keep them pretty far apart and relax the shoulders. Belly button to spine, root down through the tailbone, lift through the crown of the head, and then easily start to walk the hands towards each other, any amount. So we're not forcing it here. It really doesn't matter if the feet, or sorry, the hands are like a foot apart or touching. We're just opening up the shoulders. And keep looking straight ahead, relax the shoulders, and draw. So the top elbow, the right elbow, we're gonna draw it back a couple of inches so that it's in line with the torso. Go ahead and relax the shoulders again. And exhale, take the left elbow a couple of inches forward. And again, wiggle the waist long, so we're lifting out of the lower back. And relax the shoulders. 
slide the shoulder blades down the back towards the top ribs. Close the eyes. And notice where you feel the if, if and where you feel any tension or gripping in the upper back or the lower back maybe. Okay, and then open the eyes and release the strap. And then you're going to take the fingertips, sorry, the fingers together, interlace the fingers in front and exhale round the back, take the chin towards the chest. Reach the hands away from you, belly button to spine. And then come back to center, take the hands behind you and interlace the fingers with the weird finger on top. And inhale, lift the chest, lift the chin, that looks beautiful. Belly button to spine, slide the shoulder blades, and then come back to center. Okay, take a block by the right hip. And you're gonna take the right hand onto the block. And the right leg is in front still. Inhale the left arm up. So really reach up with that left, left fingers. Feel the left side of the waist lengthening, reach up a touch more really 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 reach up and then exhale left hand to right knee and bend the left elbow to help you turn into the twist and look over the right shoulder and with each inhale we're going to lengthen so heavy the tailbone and lift through the crown of the head and with each exhale we're turning into the twist so it's kind of like a dance the inhale lengthens, the exhale twists, and on and on with each breath. And then inhale, come back to center. And we'll take the left leg in front, so just switch legs. Now, depending on whether this is the weird leg in front, it might feel off balance. So just wiggle the sit bones and press them both into the block, into the block, belly button to spine, and lift through the crown of the head. So we're pressing down into the tailbone, lifting through the crown of the head. And then take the block to the left hip. And inhale the right arm up. Reach, 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 reach as high as you can. Lengthen the right side of the waist. And exhale, right hand to left knee. And turn to look over the back shoulder. And then bend that right elbow. And we're going to do the dance again of the inhale lengthens and the exhale twist. Inhale lengthen, exhale twist. So you're growing the spine and growing the twist. You don't have to force it, just kind of do what feels good for you. Welcome back, Terry. <laughs> okay, and then inhale, come back to center. So we have the left leg in front, Terry. I can't see what you have. Yeah, okay. And then we're going to take the strap to the uh, with the left hand at the top of the back. And the right hand is at the bottom. So again, just start easy. It just, it doesn't matter how much space you have between the hands adjust the shoulders, root down through the tailbone, lift through the crown of the head. So we're lifting out of the lower back. And then easily start to walk the hands towards each other with the exhale, any amount. And the pelvis is staying neutral. So don't kind of um, arch the lower back to try to force the hands together. We wanna maintain that neutral pelvis the natural curves of the spine. And release the shoulders, look straight ahead. And move that top shoulder back a couple of inches so it's in line with the torso. And then move the right elbow forward a couple of inches. And close the eyes if that feels comfortable. And release the shoulder blades. So you're sliding the shoulder blades down towards the top ribs. 
and notice if you're still gripping anywhere in the in the shoulders in the lower back in the upper back And as you inhale, we're going to lengthen. So just like with the twist, inhale, lengthen, and exhale, release the shoulders. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, release the shoulders. Okay, and then open the eyes and release the strap. Okay, and then come onto all fours. Okay, so we're going to be on all fours, really spread the, spread the fingers. So we've got a really nice base in the hands. And then press down into the um, top part of the palm, bottom part of the finger, so that joint there. So you're taking the pressure off the wrists a little bit. And Terry, just move the hands back slightly so they're right underneath the shoulders. Good. Belly button to spine. And we're going to lengthen the spine here by reaching back with the tailbone and forward with the crown of the head. So we've got a nice long spine. And we're gonna work through five cat cows. So inhale, arch the spine, look forward. Exhale, press down through the hands, round the back, chin to chest. So you can do this on your own breath cycle, incorporating every part of the spine. So the neck, the upper back, the middle back where the bra line is, all the way down through the lower back towards the tailbone. And as you're going through this, you can probably notice the parts of the spine that are harder to flex or arch. And it's different for different people. But usually the lower back is kind of hard. And the middle back. And just check in with the lower back. See if it's feeling tender. If it's feeling strong today. Keep drawing the belly button back towards the spine. And then after the next cat, so the um, flexion, come back to a neutral spine. Good, and in this neutral spine, we're still gonna maintain that length. So always be thinking about the crown of the head reaching forward and the tailbone reaching back. Okay, and then keeping the hips where they are, we're gonna exhale, walk the hands forward and come down onto the forearms. And then exhale, the forehead and the chest down towards the mat. So the feet are gonna stay in line with the knees. And with each exhale, release some of the tension in the shoulders. So it's really easy to grip here in the shoulder blades and the, and the lats because, you know, depending on the flexibility of your spine and the back muscles, it's this is a challenging pose. So your body is trying to, you know, protect itself. So you don't have to change any of that right now. Just be aware of it. We have for two more rounds of breath. And then the next inhale, lift the head and walk the hands back underneath the shoulders. And then inhale the left arm out to the side. Reach it as far as you can, so creating space between the shoulder blades. Press down into the right hand and then lift the left fingers up towards the ceiling. Look up towards the hand, press down again into the right hand. So we're creating tons of space between the shoulder blades and in the lower back. 
And then exhale, take the left arm under the torso. Side of the face comes down to the mat. Press the right hand into the mat to help you turn into the twist. And keep actively reaching the left fingers out towards the right. So with each inhale, reach the left fingers. And with each exhale, turn into the twist. And on the next inhale, come back to center. Good, and then inhale the right arm out to the side. Reach, 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 reach. So keep the left shoulder over the left hand. And we're just reaching with the fingers, the right fingers. And then reach it up towards the ceiling. Press into the left hand. Create space between the collarbones and the shoulder blades. Belly button to spine and exhale, take the right hand and arm under the torso. Walk the fingers away from you. And bend the left elbow, press into the left hand to turn into that twist. You're turning the chest towards the left. Beautiful. Belly button to spine to protect the lower back. And close the eyes. Notice where you might be gripping. Maybe it's in the jaw, the forehead, the throat. It's different for everybody. And inhale, come back to center. And then lower yourself onto the mat so you're on your front. And then you're going to take the elbows right underneath the shoulders. And <clears throat> lift the left leg up and move it back. Lift the right leg up and move it back. So we're making space in the lower back. Belly button to spine. And then exhale. Pull the, shoulder, pull the chest through the upper arms for sphinx. So the elbows are going to be under the shoulders, um, Terry. And we're gazing down over the nose. Relax the shoulders so the shoulder blades are moving down the back. And still think about lifting out of the lower back. So the tailbone is moving down, crown of the head is lifting. And lower down. You take the um, hands underneath the forehead. And bring the legs together, squeeze the glutes, squeeze the core. And on the exhale, going to lift the right leg a few inches. Reach back with the toes. Inhale, lower. Exhale, lift the left leg. Inhale, lower. We're going to do this two more times on each side on your own breath cycle. And you can lift it any amount, whatever feels good for you. Okay, and then after you've finished um, on the left, take the hands alongside the chest and inhale, come back up to all fours. Okay, tuck the toes and exhale into a bent knee down dog. So we've got a super bent knee down dog looking forward to the hands. Then lift the hips. Think about the sit bones moving back to the back of the room and up towards the corner of the room and get super bouncy here so it's like you could just spring forward press away from the hands into the shoulders and then straighten the legs inhale the right leg into the air exhale take the right knee to the right hand the pigeon on the right and you can take a block underneath the right hip if, if you'd like. And you can also take a block underneath the hands if that feels good for the wrists. So we're going to walk that left foot back. So just pick it up and walk it back. 
So we're extending through the left leg, creating space in the lower back. And look forward. Good. Release the shoulders. Release the right hip down. And direct the breath towards the lower back. So think about the lower back spreading. So in the beginning, we were talking about um, creating space vertically and horizontally. So right now we're thinking about creating space horizontally. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and then step the hands down to the mat if you're on the block. And exhale into a bent knee down dog again. Look forward to the hands. Sit bones move back and up. Belly button to spine. And straighten the legs. Inhale the left leg into the air. Exhale, step the left knee towards the left hand. Walk the right foot back. So it's like creeping back towards the back of the mat. And then you can take the block underneath the left hip if you'd like. And you can either be on the fingertips or on a block, whatever feels most comfortable for the hands and the wrists. And we're looking forward, release the shoulders, belly button to spine, and both hip points are pointing down shoulders are balanced good so mum just release the left shoulder a little bit relax it down good okay and then take the blocks away hands to the mat and exhale into down dog and we're going to pedal out the feet here And inhale forward into plank, belly button to spine, firm the shoulder blades, and exhale, low down onto the onto your belly. And I'm going to take the hands alongside the torso, palms facing down. Again, walk the uh, right foot back, walk the left foot back, creating that space. Belly button to spine, and on the exhale, we're going to lift the legs chest and arms for locust so take a nice big inhale exhale lift reach back with the toes and the fingers slide the shoulder blades and breathe easy here squeeze the glutes four three two one and lower down all right we're going to do that one more time so take an inhale and exhale, lift. Good, lift the chest just a touch more. Gaze down over the nose. Reach back with the heel at uh, toes. And inhale, lower down. Good, take, okay, take the hands underneath the shoulders. And again, walk the feet back. So we're creating space again, just in case it got scrunched up belly button to spine and exhale lift the chest for a baby cobra so we're going to keep the elbows bent slide the shoulder blades down the back lift out of the low back so the tailbone is moving down and the ribs the back ribs are lifting up out of the low back good and inhale lower down and take a breath here And on the next exhale, lift the chest and the elbows are a little bit straighter. So it's kind of like a medium cobra. Good. Relax the shoulders. Gaze over the nose again. And inhale, lower down. And we're going to roll over onto the back. 
bring a block with you. And then lift the hips, take the block at the um, lowest height underneath the sacrum. Feet stay on the floor. Close the eyes. And allow the sacrum to settle down into the block. So notice if your body is still doing anything to try to, um, you know, protect the body or try to do any work to keep the body lifted. Just trust the block and know that it can take your weight. Okay, and take the belly button towards the spine and slowly lift the left knee towards 90 degrees. And using the strength of the core, we're going to exhale, lift the right knee towards 90 degrees. And pause here, relax the shoulders down. Release the sacrum into the block. And keep drawing the belly button back towards the spine. Straighten both legs, so they're reaching up towards the ceiling. Reach up through the heels, down with the toes. And at the beginning of class, we were exhaling, sorry, inhaling and exhaling through the nose, aiming for four and seven. So you don't have to do four and seven here, but just think about extending the exhale, especially if um, you're in a challenging pose that we're holding. It's easy to hold the breath by mistake. So just be mindful of the breath. Keep drawing the belly button back towards the spine. The strength of the core here is keeping the legs lifted. Okay, and then bend the knees to 90 degrees. And draw the belly button back to the spine and exhale, slowly lower the right heel down. And then slowly lower the left heel down. And lift the hips, take the block away. Take the arms out to the side in the T position. Walk the fingers as far away as you can so you can feel the space between the shoulder blades growing wider. And then take the right ankle to the left knee. And exhale, take the right foot over towards the left and look out towards the right. Relax the jaw. Release the shoulders into the mat. And inhale, come back to center. Exhale over to the right and look out to the left. And inhale, come back to center. Step the right foot down and left ankle goes to right knee. Exhale the left foot over towards the right, look out to the left. Be intentional about your breath. Notice it. And inhale, come back to center. Exhale over to the left. And then inhale, come back to center and draw both knees in towards the chest. Take the hands to the shins and rock side to side. And start to make circles with the knees a few times in each direction. And then lengthen the left leg. So the left leg is going to go along the ground. And the right knee is going to come in towards the chest. So with each exhale, draw the right knee in a little bit closer. And 
and then take the right arm out to the side. Left hand comes to the outside of the right knee. And exhale, take the right knee across the body towards the left. And look out towards the right. Close the eyes and notice which parts of the spine are twisting right now, which are lengthening, which are widening. And inhale, come back to center and draw both knees in towards the chest. Flex the feet and we're going to draw a figure of eight here with the knees. And then change direction, the drawing in the other direction. Okay, and then pause and reach the right leg long. It goes to the ground. Press the right foot into an imaginary wall so that the right leg is still engaged. And exhale, draw the left knee in a little closer with each exhale. And you can probably notice um, which hip flexor is tighter, either the right or the left, and which side of the lower back is tighter with this pose. There's no judgment here at all in your body. Just having an awareness of which side is tighter. And that might be different depending on which part of the body it is. And then take the left arm out to the side, palm facing down. Right hand comes to the outside of the left knee. And exhale, take the left knee over to the right. Look out to the left. Notice where you're gripping. Be intentional about the breath. And notice the spreading of the lower back. So hip point to hip point is widening. And inhale, come back to center. Okay, bend the knees, take the heels up towards the ceiling, and then take the hands through the legs to the outsides of the feet for happy baby. And you have the option of using a strap here, if you'd like, um, but bring the feet to hip width apart, sorry, to where the knees are, so they're in line with the knees. And press the feet into the hands, hands into the feet. Good, and draw the knees towards the armpits. Feel the lower back spreading and rock side to side, just a little, so you don't topple over like a weevil. <laughs> if you do like that, just roll back to the middle. It's all good. I'm going to stay here for another 30 seconds. So get comfortable. Feel the lower back adjusting. Feel the groins adjusting and lengthening. Notice the breath. And then release the feet and cross the shins, belly button to spine, exhale, roll to sit. Okay, take the soles of the feet together for Baddha Konasana and take the hands um, around the toes and rock side to side. 
opening up the groins. Good, keep the belly button drawing back towards the spine. And keep reaching through the crown of the head. So we're still maintaining that space in the lower back. Okay, and then pause in the center and take the left leg over to the right. So the left shin is gonna be resting in the um, arch of the right foot. And then you can take a block for the right hand, under the right hand, just makes it so much easier. And think about the left sit bone drawing down towards the mat. The crown of the head is lifting, belly button to spine, and inhale the left arm, reach. So we're creating that length in the left side of the waist, and exhale, left hand to right knee, and turn to look over the back shoulder. Good, so maintain the length of the spine, so not collapsing over into the left. Inhale, lengthen, and exhale, twist. Good, and then come back to center, but keep the legs where they are. And then you're gonna take the left hand to the top of the left foot and move the left knee and the left foot back. And then walk the left foot forward so that left knee is at 90 degrees. And walk the right foot forward so the right knee is at 90 degrees. Good. And you can have the right hand on a block still if you'd like. And again, think about that left sit bone moving down towards the mat. Now it's not gonna to touch the mat, but just think about it moving in that direction. And reach up through the crown of the head. And take uh, the right hand to the right side of the thigh, left hand to the left side of the thigh, the front thigh. And then we're going to walk, exhale, walk the hands forward any amount. So we're bringing the chest over the thigh. And you can have a, right, uh, a block under the right elbow if, you, if that's helpful. It's helpful for me. And just breathe, be intentional about the breath, nothing fancy. Just ensuring that you're not holding your breath and that you complete each exhale. Relax the back of the neck, maybe looking down towards the knee. A few more rounds of breath. And inhale, heavy the tailbone, walk the fingertips back. And then take the hands behind the hips and inhale, keep the feet where they are. We're gonna bring the knees to center and exhale over to the left. And then just keep moving the knees left to right. So keep moving the knees to the center and then over to the right. Good. Just opening up the hips, opening up the groins. Press down through the tailbone, lift through the crown of the head so we're not collapsing into the lower back. Belly button to spine. And when we have a strong core, that really helps to protect the lower back. So the back, lower back is not taking on the work that the core should be. Okay, we'll do it one more time on each side, finishing on the left side. Good, and then bring a block to the left hip. And then walk the left foot back and the right foot forward so that the right shin comes to the arch of the right foot. Left foot, sorry. <laughs> Gonna be doing Baravajasana twist. Okay, so the um, right sit bone settles down towards the floor. Belly button to spine, reach up through the crown of the head. Inhale the right arm. So we're creating so much space in the right side of the waist, from the hip all the way up the waist, through the armpit to the fingertips. And exhale, right hand to left knee. And turn to look over the back shoulder. 
And we'll dance with the breath here again. So inhale, lengthen. And we're lengthening through the tailbone and the crown of the head. And exhale, twist. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, twist. And this isn't any amount. So even if you don't really feel like you're moving any more into the twist, you're just thinking about it. And then inhale, come back to center. Take the right hand to the top of the right foot and move the foot back. Good, and then walk the right foot forward so that it's left, uh, right knee is at 90 degrees. And then walk the left foot forward. So the left knee is at 90 degrees. Left hand stays on the block. And imagine that right sit bone is moving down towards the mat. And lift up through the crown of the head. And yeah, you may notice that one side is significantly tighter in the groin, the glute, the outside of the thigh. Close the eyes here if you can, if that's comfortable. And notice where it's challenging. And then breathe into that area. Okay, and then open the eyes and take the hands to either side of the front thigh. And exhale, hinge forward from the hips and walk the hands forward, lowering the chest down towards the thigh. Again, you can bring the block with you if that's helpful for the left elbow. And release the back of the neck. So you're looking back towards the knee. Five more rounds of breath. And on the next inhale, heavy the tailbone, walk the hands back. Put the hands behind the hips. And cross the shins and roll over onto your knees. Take the knees wide, feet together. And then we're going to exhale, walk the hands forward for wide knee child's pose. Take the forehead to the mat. Notice the widening of the low back. Release the shoulders. Release any gripping in the jaw or the forehead or the hips. Three more rounds of breath here. And then inhale, come back up onto all fours. And tuck the toes and come to stand. We're gonna do our one standing pose of the class here. <laughs> Okay, so grab two blocks at the highest height. I'm going to put them, um, I don't know, about a foot in front of you. And then cross the right foot behind, across the right foot in behind the left. 
so that the pinky toes are together. Okay, and then hands to hips, belly button to spine. Press down equally through both feet and exhale, hinge forward from the hips. And then we're going to take the hands to the blocks at highest, medium or lowest height, depending on the flexibility of your hamstrings. And press down through both feet. Relax the back of the neck. Shift the weight a little bit further forward onto the uh, towards the middle front of the feet, so that the um, the hips, knees, and heels are stacked. Round the spine. And then bring a little more weight towards the right foot. It's not going to be pressing into the left foot, but shift most of the weight into the right foot. And think about the sit bones moving back and up. So it's almost like you're tucking your pelvis. Okay, and then step the right foot around. And we're going to step the left foot in behind the right foot. So pinky toe to pinky toe again. And release the head, rounding the spine, just like Uttanasana. And again, you can probably tell which side of the lower back is tighter with the, this pose. Few more rounds of breath. And then set the left foot over and bend the knees and take the knees to the mat again. And widen the knees, feet together. We're going to exhale forward into wide knee child pose. Without forcing, just guide the hips down towards the heels. So it really doesn't matter the distance between them. You know, for some people, naturally their body just releases the, the hips down towards the heels. For some people, like moi, that's never going to happen. So just be okay with, with your body and, you know, get to know it. And some days are going to be tighter than others, you know, especially if you've, I don't know, been running or done some kind of activity that makes your lower back tighter. That's going to impact that. So just be aware of all these things without judgment. And just notice. Okay, and inhale, come up to center, and then roll over onto your back. I'm going to bring the block again. And take the block underneath the sacrum at the lowest height. Close the eyes, exhale. And trust your back, trust your sacrum, trust the block that it can all work itself out. Inhale down towards the pelvis. 
and exhale back up. And then on the next inhale, lift the hips and place the block at the medium height underneath the sacrum. And lower the, lower the sacrum back down, feet stay on the floor. And allow the sacrum and lower back to adjust to this new height, this new back bend. And inhale, lift the hips, take the block away. Take the arms to either side, palms facing down. And left ankle to right knee. Exhale, take it over to the right and look out to the left. Inhale, come back to center. Exhale to the left, look out to the right. Inhale back to center, set the left foot down, right ankle to left knee. Exhale over to the left, look out to the right. And inhale center, exhale right. And inhale, come back to center, lift both feet, bend the knees, take the arms through the legs for happy baby. And happy baby is gonna be our active Shavasana today. So spreading the lower back, checking in with each part of the body from the toes all the way down the feet, through the legs, the hips, the pelvis, the lower back, all the way up the back body, the neck, the back of the skull, all of the facial muscles, the throat, the chest and the belly, the shoulders, the arms, and the fingers. And you can rock side to side if you'd like. Notice the breath. Okay, we're going to use the last 20 seconds to just focus on the breath. So inhale four, exhale seven. Just count. Return to regular breathing and release the feet. Roll over onto the right side. Just pause here for a moment. And inhale, push down into the left hand and come to sit in any comfortable position. Okay, bring your hands together at heart center. Close your eyes. And just think about the gratitude of being able to 
work with our lower back today. We get to work with our lower back because there are so many people who really, really, really struggle with lower back pain and injury. So today we got to create space in the lower back and strengthen. The lower back is so important for just basic living, really. <laughs> okay, and thanks for joining me today. Namaste.